In 1994, a major earthquake struck Los Angeles, causing massive power outages across the city. Residents reportedly called 911 to express alarm about a strange, silvery cloud hovering overhead. They were in fact seeing the Milky Way galaxy for the first time. So I've been doing astrophotography for just over a year now. I've been doing it since December of 2016. I got my first camera, which was the Nikon D3400 as a Christmas gift um, around November of 2016. So an early Christmas gift at that. I was on a vacation in Arizona and the first night sky picture I ever took was at ISO 12,000, 30 seconds, 50 millimeter. So of course I had star trails and of course I had a super noisy image, but I was actually able to see stars and just being able to capture one star that was in focus um, and you know, have detail in the star turned me on and I went full out from there. It was around June of 2017 that I started photographing the Milky Way. I got into um, going places each month. Once a month, I would go to some cool place. So a bucket list location I would try to go to. Now, of course, I still had my D3400 and Nikon kit lenses back here. So the photographs I was creating weren't amazing or astonishing by any means, but I was getting out, I was capturing the Milky Way. So photographing the Milky Way is I could go to um, stress reliever for me, sitting underneath the stars, watching, hearing the crickets behind you or, or all around you, underneath a new moon, full stars. One of the most peaceful things I have ever experienced. Without further ado guys, here we go. I'm gonna give you my tutorial on how to photograph the Milky Way. These are things I've learned over the year and a half. I've been doing Milky Way photography. Um, hopefully enjoy it and I'll see you in the comments. So whenever I go out to shoot the Milky Way, there's three things I always like to bring with me. One being my tripod, second being my camera, and third being a wide angle lens. I have a bunch of other accessories, but the three most important are the lens, camera, and tripod. Finding a camera to use to take pictures of the Milky Way is often the hardest part for a lot of people. For me, I use a Nikon D750, but most modern day DSLRs with an interchangeable lens and manual camera settings will be able to take decent pictures of the Milky Way. When it comes to picking a lens, you want something that's in a wide angle, so maybe in between 14 to 35 millimeter, depending on your camera. Um, for me, I like 14 to 24 millimeter. That's a good focal length for a wide field astrophotography. Now you'll want a lens that has a wide aperture, so f1.4, f1.8, f2.8, um, with a maximum aperture of like f2.8 or one to four, like I said, that's gonna let a lot of light in and anything more than f2.8, so maybe f3.2, you start losing a lot of light and the, noise, and the noise in the image starts getting increased. So try to use lenses that are wide angle with a fast aperture for the best results. The next challenge that you will find in astrophotography is finding the Milky Way itself. After you have your camera and lens set up, you wanna find the Milky Way. Now, if you don't know how to find it, it can be quite difficult. So, one of the easiest ways that I have found to locate the Milky Way is using an app called PhotoPills. You can get PhotoPills for only $9.99 off the App Store for both iOS and Android. And pretty much what it does is it lays an augmented reality vision of where the Milky Way is at the time of day you're going to be shooting. So you can set the time of day you want to shoot and where you want to shoot from and the app will calculate where the Milky Way is in what part of the sky at that time of day. So whether you're unsure where the Milky Way is in your sky 
or if you're trying to find the Milky Way at a certain location that you haven't been before, PhotoPills will let you do that easily, quickly, within seconds of opening the app. So if you want to find the Milky Way easily, then PhotoPills is the way to go. It makes finding it easy, it makes photographing it easier, and it makes everything a more enjoyable experience because who likes to sit underneath the stars and have a hard time finding it? If you don't know where it is, get PhotoPills. It's a dream. Setting a correct exposure for the Milky Way is often more simple than is given credit for, but one thing that often gets overlooked when actually photographing the Milky Way is the monitor in which you're reviewing your photos of of the Milky Way. So after you take a photo and you're, you look at that photo, you're looking on, on a monitor. Now that monitor is set for a daytime brightness, so you can see that monitor in the daytime. So by lowering the monitor brightness, you are then creating a exposure that matches an ambient lighting so that it's around you. So when you're taking a picture during the daytime, you have to have a very bright monitor so you can actually see what the picture looks like. However, at that same brightness at night, the photo's gonna look way more exposed than it actually is when you open it up on your computer. So by turning our monitor brightness down, we're gonna be able to see what our exposure looks like when it is set to the ambient lighting that is around us. That way we can get a better exposure and see what it looks like on the camera instead of coming back home and finding that our camera is oftentimes underexposed simply because our monitor brightness was displaying something much brighter than it was actually taking a picture of. Now when it comes to actually photographing the Milky Way and finding an exposure that works best for it, it's kind of you know, figuring out what works best for that current scenario which you're in. I typically find that a shutter speed of 15 to 30 seconds works the best with an ISO of 1600 all the way up to 6400. Um, the aperture can be anywhere between f3 and f1.4. However, these can all be changed in co accordingly to fit best match the scene you're in. Typically 15 seconds ISO 1600 f2.8 is a base exposure that works pretty well for most cameras. However, if your camera or lens needs something different, then I would recommend changing that to your scene and figuring out what works best for you. Now because photographing the Milky Way only occurs after dark, autofocus lenses will not have enough light to actually focus the lens and capture the Milky Way. So we have to resort to using manual focus lenses, so we have to manually focus the lens in order to get a decent sharp picture of the Milky Way. Now, manually focusing the lens is actually quite easy. What you want to do is use the live view feature on the back of your camera, zoom in to a bright star, and rotate your camera zoom ring till that star is small as possible. Once you get the star as small as you can, go ahead and zoom out, take your pictures, and the Milky Way will appear pin sharp, and you'll have a nice focus. As you start to do more and more astrophotography, you'll start to realize that the images you are creating are actually quite grainy. Now the reason for this is because shooting the Milky Way requires um, a lot of light in a short time period. So in order to get more light into your image, you're using ISO and crank the ISO up from 1600 all the way to 6400 like we talked about earlier. Now the higher ISO goes, the more noise your image creates. Now this, this noise that the image that the ISO creates causes the image to be grainy. Now the reason we use a star tracker is to reduce noise. Put simply, a star tracker tracks the stars and lets you take a super long exposure of the stars without getting a star trail. What this means for us is we can use a long exposure of the Milky Way without having to use high, high ISOs. So by using a low ISO and a long exposure, we can create images with little noise and very high amounts of detail. Now this tutorial is not about how to use a star tracker, but I am recommending one. So if you want to take better, cleaner images in Milky Way, I go ahead investing in a star tracker. Now if you want a tutorial on how to use the star tracker, go ahead check out the link in the description. You can watch a video on how to use the star tracker there.
Hey YouTube, huge thanks for watching this video. If you liked it and want to see more, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. If you didn't like this video or you had uh, some critiques to make, go ahead, leave a comment what I can do better next time. Your opinion means the world. If you guys want to see more content again, hit that subscribe button. But until next time guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Peace out. I'll see you later.